Hey. Hello, Katie. Oh, hi, Vanessa. You? I'm well. I'm well. <laughs> oh, great. Good to see you. Wonderful to see you. I'm super excited to um, to get to meet you and connect with you and dive into your amazing wisdom and share that with our audience. And uh, yeah, so just wanting to really welcome you to the Limitless Potential podcast. Thank and you. Uh, it's such a pleasure to have you. Thank you. Thank you for the um, um, amazing opportunity just to share um, maybe something helpful for people. Definitely, definitely. And you look beautiful, by the way. Oh, Absolutely. thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know, it's one of those things I can say, you know, I had ab absolutely nothing to do with. <laughs> well, that's, oh, that's amazing. And Katie, I would absolutely, you know, I've been following your work for um, a few years now and um, just constantly am reminded and, and getting insights and ahas and sharing that with my clients and um, our audience. I'm so glad to hear yeah. that. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. That's and a life, that's a life want, worth living. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And I think that's what um, your work really wakes us mm. all up to. So I wondered if you might, um, obviously I know part of your story, but I wondered if you might take us back to a bit of the story about how the work began for you and um, share that with um, those, um, those of us out there who aren't totally familiar with your story. Maybe this is very new to them mm -hmm. and um, love to dive into a piece of that story about how it all started and where you were in, in your life at that point. Mm -hmm. Well, I was very depressed, clinically depressed, and um, almost a decade, more or less, I, I don't know, it was hard. And, um, and I was lying on the floor one morning, just in a dead sleep, and um, a cockroach called over my foot, and I opened my eyes, and all the suffering was gone, all the depression was gone. And, and I saw in that moment that when I believed my thoughts, I suffered. And when I didn't believe them, and that's what that moment showed me, there was no suffering. And that was the difference between suffering and no suffering. So um, I've come to see that this is true for every human being. When we believe our thoughts, we suffer. When we don't believe our mm -hmm. thoughts, we don't suffer. And I'm talking about the thoughts that go against the heart. And when we're in touch with mm -hmm. our true nature, which is what my work's all about, you know, the, the, you know, this interview, everything I do, it's about just passing on to others that there is a simple way. And it's a practice I call the work, and uh, it's inquiry, and um, an, a, great, um, a, a great mind um, said that an unquestioned mind is not worth living. And I've come to see, mm. see that this is absolutely true. I think it was Socrates. But um, in, in my experience and the experience of millions of people, it's really so. We question what, why, mm. what we believe or we have to live out of that. And if we're suffering, we can actually identify what we're thinking and believing and question it. Mm. And this is this is what I think is so beautiful about the, the, the work is it's so simple and it's so profound. And part of what I wanted to really dive into with you, um, I recently heard you um, speaking, uh, you, a recording of you, um, I think back from 2015, and you were talking into an experience you had where you were um, entering into the prison system and, and having these conversations with um, some men in the prison system. And you said that it had been years since you'd left the world of duality and it had been years since you'd actually had a negative thought. And why, what I wanted to, to sort of dive in, that was really profound for me because I have been living with a belief that we cannot control the thoughts that enter our mind, but we can create the space to question them and choose something more empowering. But I wanted you to maybe clarify um, what you mean, like how do we get to a point where we don't. We don't even have the negative thought to question. Well, you know, if actually, I've understood it right. Well, actually, the work is meditation. It's a practice, and I invite people, you know, to this daily practice. Whereas we identify those thoughts that are so um, depressing or enemy-making, 
and sad making, um, and we question them, and um, and I really don't recall recall your question. Could you isolate it? Of course, of course. So I wanted to know. So I I have a perspective of, or I have had that where it's you know like the the, the trick is if if I can go back a moment from what I heard from you, I can respond this way. It's not about getting rid of my thoughts. It's about no. understanding my thoughts. Because if I don't understand my thoughts, I can't understand people in my world, my children, my grandchildren, my husband, myself. Mm. So if I question mm. those thoughts, they, they lose their power. And actually, let's say if I had the thought um, oh, this is this is very radical. I don't know if I can go here or not, but but go it, for it. <laughs> well, it, it would be like um, um, this person doesn't care about me. If I had that thought, then that's not depressing because I've questioned it. I have an understanding within me, so I would celebrate that person is thinking for themselves. They have a right to their own conclusions. They have a right to believe what they think. They don't know me. So it's not about me. If they, if, if they believe they don't like me, for example, that's about them and what they're believing about me. So that is not personal with me. So if someone says, I don't like you at all, then um, I, am, I stay connected. I, I don't separate from that person. I understand. So they don't care about me ceases to be a thought in my head that I even want to get rid of because it ceases to be a negative experience. So that is a very profound uh, way to live out of, out of life where um, the only thing, the only thing in this world that can hurt me is what I'm thinking and believing about me, about you, about my world. So that gives me 100% control and, and, um, and responsibility for my world, for my life, for me. And um, I can tell you it's a much kinder world because I know what hell is. I, you know, I came out of that 10-year spiral by some state of grace, and I didn't, I didn't ask for it. I, well, you know, maybe I did because I was screaming at some point, take me home. And mm -hmm. on that floor, I, was, I, was, um, I received a great gift. And because I pass it on, I'm, it, it uh, continues to expand my mind, this wonderful mind. I have a new book coming out this month or, or next month. Anyway, it's on my website. Uh, people can go to Amazon and find it. What I'm describing really is a, a mind at home in itself. And that's the name of the book, a mind at home with itself. And it doesn't, it, 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 that is a mind that is no longer at war with itself. So to understand mm -hmm. what, what you think is peace and to understand what you think is to understand what everyone says in, in a way mm -hmm. that, that doesn't separate me. It's a fearless state of mind and a fearless life as far as I know. And I'm very open to whatever life <laughs> brings, you know, but so far so good. Yeah. Oh, and I, I absolutely, I'm so, I'm really taking all of this in and um, just feeling into it. And it's already expanding my mind oh, good. Um, as well. And I love that. And um, Well, there's no prohibition. Like, there's no prohibition in it. There's mm -hmm. no, no wall. There's nothing to do except take our problems to paper and question them. And of course, mm -hmm. directions for that are on the work.com and it's free. And anyone can mm -hmm. do this if their mind is open to it. Definitely. And um, something that just popped into my mind um, was really asking you about 
identity because I, I hear from what you're saying is that that ability to disidentify from our thoughts and uh, and that is what creates that freedom so that we're not triggered we're not um, at war with the people in our lives ourselves and all things and I wondered what you know because um, it's I'm just trying to get my mind around yeah. it that whole concept of what like how how do you see yourself if do you you know if we don't identify with you know our thoughts which is our kind of consciousness then what is our identity well you know we're not left with much and we're left with a lot <laughs> because if if my if my husband says i love you then then what he's thinking and about what he's thinking believing about me is the person I am to him. So my children the same, my friends the same, people in my life the same. What they're thinking and believing about me becomes my identity within them. And if they don't care about me, that would be painful. If they do, and because the me isn't personal, and if they do care about me, that is a that is a wonderful thing. It's the ability to care, and again, not personal with me, but all my identities are held as a separate, as a separate uh, structure for everyone that knows me. So, um, so why would I bother with identity when I have so many? It, it's like I'm, I'm unnecessary as far as creating an identity because there's so many out there. Now, if someone says, um, Katie, you hurt my feelings, I immediately would say, oh my goodness, you know, let's discuss that. I don't want that in my life. I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings, so tell me specifically so we could talk that through, and that grows me. Because if I have said or done something to cause another person harm, they wake me up to it. And in that, I'm aware of what I was not aware of prior to that. So there's no one in this world that does not serve my, um, this, this beautiful mind to expand, this mind at home in itself to expand. But um, mm -hmm. um, it's, it really is... Um, you know, no identity necessary. But if I if I look, sweetheart, if I if I look to, um, it's like um, this morning I was sitting in the home, um, sitting in the kitchen with Stephen, my husband, and um, and I see that in my mind's eye. You probably saw me in the kitchen with my husband just then, and <laughs> and and you didn't even have to meet my husband, but you you can see an image of my kitchen, and and you've never seen my kitchen. But, but you were there. So if I, if it, when, when I see that in my mind's eye, when I'm discussing that with you, is, you know, I, I look at that's not my identity. That's, that is, that is an image of, that is an image. It's not real. So I am the one speaking to you here now. And that's all the identity I need to hold. When a mind is at mm -hmm. home with itself, no identity is necessary. It is just, it is just wide open to everything because that's what love is. It's an experience. Mm. And so anything mm. that would interfere with that, um, in my life I question it. And, and I invite mm. the world to that because suffering is optional. Well, I love that. And, um, you know, something that sort of came to mind there, you know, was really a, a question around being intentional. So I, could I, could I um, you know, if we question our thoughts and we don't identify with our thoughts and we ultimately want to stay open to the experience of everything that happens in this moment without identifying with it and that ultimately is love, then you know how how do we how do we decide when to be more intentional? Is it outside? Like well, in terms you know, of does, living that way is nothing I could um, do. It's nothing that mm -hmm. I could decide or do. It's it's what I'm left with 
it's the consciousness I'm left with, the enlightenment I'm left with after inquiry. So this mm -hmm. is not something I could control. This is not something, mm -hmm. again, that I could do. It's something that, that it's the way my mind works after inquiry, all the inquiry that I've, I've done in, in my life. And, you know, just sitting yeah. in that practice of awareness until finally, um, not just me, but a lot of people, it's ongoing because the inquiry is alive in them. The practice is alive in them. And it, it's not just sitting in the mornings meditating on, um, he betrayed me, is it true? <laughs> mm. So would you say that the um, the inquiry is a way of being? It, 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 it's, you know, we're all being. It's just, are we happy in it? Now, the, um, the, um, the thing you may be looking for th that I'm sensing is how can we have a better life, a more creative, fabulous life? Every time we question our mind, we, it, it's like less space junk is out of the, out of the way. This fake news, in other words, the things we find that are not true for each of us individually, you know, ourself, the one inquiring. But when we start, you know, it clears the, the head full of junk, full of fake news. And in mm -hmm. that, the choices we make are brilliant. They come out of knowledge and pure creativity, and they're doable. They're not beyond us, and the directions are all there. That's knowledge. Mm -hmm. But all these things we're thinking and believing that create the false self, you know, I, 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 me, 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 I, I, uh, is the, the, the clutter that, that keeps us from the awareness of all that knowledge that is always there. So mm -hmm. through inquiry, our choices become clearer. And, um, and I have, I have come to see beyond a doubt that this universe is friendly and wisdom wouldn't take me, in, you know, wisdom so clear you don't even have to second guess it. It's wisdom is wisdom. But it's how to, mm -hmm. how to be, how to give it enough space to reveal itself to us because it's ready. It's just waiting for an open mind, and I can certainly attest to that, my, you know, to that. My life does. Mm. Mm. Oh, and uh, I, love, I love the concept of the false self. Would you say that that's what people refer to as the ego and just the chatter? Yeah, the ego. The, the unquestioned. Yeah, the ego. Yeah. Uh-huh. And, and ego. what we're believing okay. creates the ego. So when we question what we're believing... Um, it it sheds its skin like a snake, only at a much quicker rate, and it just leaves us um, uh, enlightened to what is true and what is not for ourselves. This is personal work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I really um, I love that you said that you've come to believe that it you know you've come to experience that it is a friendly universe. Mm -hmm. And when you speak into that, do you? Do you mean, you know, because so many of us are suffering because we're yes. so attached to these memories and these projections of yes. our past and how bad that was and yes. and it's this projection. And do you mean to say that we can find the positivity in that or do you mean to say that it's just, it no longer exists? Well, so um, why? What, I, what I mean to say by that, I think that is, is, is really, really valuable. It's just to identify what we were thinking and believing in those situations that just haunt us and to write them mm -hmm. down and to just get quiet and sit in the practice. And again, you know, I'm all over YouTube and and um, yes. and the work dot com, how to do the work absolutely free. Mm -hmm. And that's a process that um, I, I've used myself and had tremendous value mm -hmm. in and and particularly with some clients that I've worked with just to shift their perspective mm -hmm. and actually create that space. And it's so freeing, that yes. work. And yeah. I, I 
I wonder if we could um, give the audience just, I know you've done this a million, million times and I'm sure it doesn't, you know, you, that is you serving this beautiful mission, but I wondered if we could give our audience a short example as to what inquiry looks like with those questions and definitely invite them to go to thework.com mm -hmm. and check out, you've got some great tutorial videos which mm -hmm. are just so easy to follow along with. Yes. Um, but an example that, um, I, I wanted to to see if we could utilize this because this is something that's come up for a client of mine who appears to be trapped in you know that story and I wondered if you could explain his story that he is currently sort of really um, trying to move through is that he he really doesn't believe that he deserves success yeah. So I wondered if we could use that as a potential example as to um, and utilize the work. Well, first I would ask myself, is it true that I don't deserve mm -hmm. success? Now, first, I'd have to define success because if it's mm. just all over the map, then I'm, I'm not even close to what I want. You know, I'm imagining mm. that success is a good thing but I'm not sure I want it, you know. So mm -hmm. first I might question, I want success and define it. If he's talking about mm -hmm. money and position and power and, and uh, you know, all those things, he'd have to define it. And, mm -hmm. uh, or if he's just inter interested in freedom, that would be another definition of success. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. I don't know what, so how would you define it knowing him? Mm -hmm. So let's say, for your uh, I think for him it's, of course, so um, this would be more related to business success. So I would assume success in, in business, financial success, wealth creation. Let's use that as okay. potentially the definition. So I don't deserve to be wealthy. He may mm. want to, um, to look at it that way, or if he has more in that package of what he thinks of what he sees success, just stay with, I don't deserve to be, I don't deserve success. So mm -hmm. the question is, is it true that I don't deserve success? And then just mm -hmm. to just, you know, I've got to shift this. You know, I where I would go with this with him is, I want success. Is it true? Just straight up, because it's money, it's business, it is, it, it's like that. That's what we're we're pointing to here. So I want success. Is it true? And that you know, there's a lot that's entailed in that. You know, mm -hmm. like I want success. Is it true? What a question. <laughs> Can you see everything in there? I mean, how much is in there? It's a lot. <laughs> and especially if you have a family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a lot to consider. Mm -hmm. And especially if you already yeah. have a job. I want success. Mm -hmm. Is it true? It's a huge question to sit in. And then mm -hmm. I want success. And then just to close your eyes, just meditate on this next question. How do you react? Or I'll say it this way if that were my thought. How do I react? What happens when I believe the thought, I want success? Okay, so I meditate on that and I see, first I see that my mind compares me, unsuccessful me, with all those wealthy people, I see them, they're in their suits and they're, they're empowered and, and they're lecturing or they're getting in their, their um, they're going up their elevator in their very own building and, <laughs> and, and, and then I compare it with me, me who has no success. Okay, so you see those images, there's all those successful people, and then there's me. Now, people with fabulous business, Fortune 500 businesses, do exactly the same thing. <laughs> and mm -hmm. it's not fun. The mind compares, that's how the ego 
That's, that's how the mm -hmm. ego works. So I just am meditating on how I react when I believe the thought. I see all those successful people and, and I see me and I am not looking good and that's depressing. And then I see me trying harder and harder. I see me failing and failing and failing when I believe the thought I want success. And, and I witness that and, and I see my money's running out and I see what I've invested and I'm really, then I see me trying again. I want success. So I explore that. And mm -hmm. that is so telling. No wonder I'm exhausted at night. <laughs> you know, that's, yeah. that's emotional. And that's going on all the time for, these, mm -hmm. for people who want success. And for people who want more success that are already, the world would say, you're successful. Stop now. But that's not how it works. <laughs> you believe you want, you know, I want to be more successful. So, um, so then that, that fourth question, who would I be without the thought? Just meditating on that. Who would I be without the thought I want to be successful? Without that thought. And then I would examine my life minus that thought superimposed into my life and just meditate on that. Mm -hmm. Then I'd turn it around. And for your audience, we're just going through, is it true? How do you react when you believe the thought? And who would you be without it? Just those, those questions. And then we find opposites. I want success, turn around, I don't want success. Okay, so what does that mean to you? Open your mind, what does that mean to you? And that's radical for someone who's, who has been worshiping, I want success. And we learn that as, as children, you know, in, in its own way. So I don't want success. Okay, well, okay, let's see, that would be time away from my family, potentially. I don't want success. Oh my gosh, it would require me to hire and fire and on and on. And I mean, I just see this onslaught coming on me. And maybe that's okay with me, but it's also showing me what I need to be successful. I mean, there's a mm -hmm. whole list of things here. And it's, it's like a blueprint for what you already know and didn't know that you knew. And then you start mm -hmm. interviewing people who are successful and or for people who work for successful people. <clears throat> And you start to learn, you start to grow. And when that, when that stuff is inside of you, you're being educated because your mind's open. I mean, there's no limit to where just sitting in just one, one concept. There's no limit to where it can take you if you really get still and sit in inquiry mm -hmm. in those turnarounds. And I don't want success. And it could be that you just laugh and say, I want no piece of that. You know, I just, I, and I, I have a, you know, without that thought, I have an amazing life. Some people really do, and because they believe they're, they're, they want the success, it wipes out their awareness that they already have success if, they're, if their goal is a happy life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So all kinds of options in there, and we find what we find, but it's, it's self-education. And we're tapping into that wisdom all the time when we get still like that. Mm -hmm. It shows us. And do, and do you find that it's more difficult for the people that you work with and you take through this experience uh, when they have had like a, an actual past experience or is it just the same? Is it really just the same, no matter whether they've had an experience where say- I mean, if they, they had they all that, they if, they, if they had all that success and they lost it, you made they they had exactly. all of it. Okay, I mean. so it would be exactly the same. It would be exactly the same inquiry, because you know when you get to um, I want success. Is it true? And they sit in that. They go, Wow, no. <laughs> you, know, you know, it could just or they, they or or they might go. You know, yes. And then you just mm -hmm. move to the next. How do you react when you believe the thought? You know. Mm -hmm depression and something, frustration yeah mm -hmm. and I guess something that just 
popped up and I think I'd need to probably meditate on this myself. Um, but since we're in this conversation, <laughs> I'd love to ask it of you. And do you believe any of your thoughts or is it just do you choose to believe the thoughts that are empowering coming from that place of love? Well, I can't or... choose to believe a thought. I okay. either do or I don't. So that's really uh, relieving. That's a relief. I don't have a choice whether I, you know, <coughs> thoughts come through and, um, and I believe them or I don't. No choice. And if they if 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 they depress me or or separate me from another human being or they're hurtful in any way, they go against my heart basically. Then um, then I put them on paper, and that's my meditation for the morning. Or I just okay, do it, or so I just do it right away. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So. The okay, so I, I just want to. I'd love to hear you talk a little bit deeper into that. Like I said, I need to go away and meditate on this, I think. But, um, so we do not have a choice as to believing our thoughts or not, it just not, not as they're not as they're happening. Not we as they're we, happening. I, we believe them, we believe them, or we question them. There is no other choice, okay, okay, and. Well, oh, all right. Yeah, I definitely need to be meditating on that. I'm gonna be, that's my work for after, after our call today. And um, I wanted to ask you another question about, you know, how could somebody, and I'm sure it will be the same process, but how could somebody battling sort of suicidal thoughts move and transition into a state of joy or end that suffering from well, that place. I, I suggest to, to people that they just start with um, moments in time that recur to them with uh, mother, father, sister, brother, just the basics, worksheets on, on, on those moments in time that were so sad or hurtful or, or you know, sad or hurtful. And um, mm -hmm. and just do worksheets on them. Just start there, and depression lifts. Mm, because it's sort of they're in that position where they're looking to end their suffering on the physical level. Yeah, well, it, you know that's could... that that doesn't work. It doesn't work, and mm -hmm. here's why: there's no one to realize that they don't hurt anymore. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I was I was so suicidal, and uh, all those years, and um, I didn't figure this out until <laughs> until much later, you know, after the depression. But there really, if I had killed myself, who's there to realize it? I'm not there to realize mm -hmm. it. So what good does mm -hmm. it do? And there is a way through on um, those those um, wanting to die and the way the way out is to go in and that's mm -hmm. my experience and 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 I have worked with many people in these last 28 years and it's mm -hmm. the same for them mm. it's wonderful um, and I wondered if you could talk into how we could how we could use the work specifically in our relationships and and enhancing those relationships um, and I wonder if you could give an example either from your own life or, or um, the lives of the people that you work with in terms of how they have gone from a relation an ego driven relationship mm -hmm. to a, a truly loving relationship well to first realize that the person you live with that 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 person that relationship that you pointed out, um, that that's, I'll just put it from here because it's my experience, um, that that's my teacher. The, the people I live with, or my partner, let's say, is my teacher. So anytime I'm angry at my partner or frustrated or feel hurt, I judge my partner, write it down, ask for a question with every every complaint there and I turn it around and it lightens my my um, it lightens the identity I put 
on my partner. So when I see him, I see him as innocent. I see him without that post-it that I had planted on him. And so mm -hmm. our, um, the people we live with, they are our teachers. Everything in life is to wake us up. The people in, mm -hmm. in, our, in our, our partnerships, our romantic relationships, our, um, the people in our lives, they're there to wake us up. Every catastrophe in the world is about waking up. Everything is. There's nothing that isn't. If I break my arm, it's, it's to support me to wake up. Whatever push mm. needs to happen, happens. And we all need different pushes. We need to lose arms or legs or a partner or uh, we need our, 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 um, our car repossessed. Whatever it is, it's about waking us up. And when I discovered mm. that, you know, this inquiry is the fast track. Mm -hmm. And Katie, are you still waking up? Do you still have those, those mind, situations? Mind, mind, is, mind, is, mind is infinite. It's infinite. Uh -huh. It's infinite. Mm. It's an unending, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful experience. There's nothing to stop mm. it. It doesn't get stuck on. He doesn't care about me. I, I need this. I want that. Or there's something wrong with you and there's something wrong with me. It doesn't get stuck and dwell on those places when it's awake. It just is free to continue to create out of, out of this just pure... You know, what I love is a happy life. A happy life without end. Mm. And, mm -hmm. you know, freedom is our birthright. It's for everyone. Mm -hmm. And anyone with an open mind can question what they're believing because it keeps us stuck in the illusion mm -hmm. of time. It keeps us stuck in time. It holds us back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And do you, you know, do you think of us as, you know, part of what I've gained value from that inquiry and particularly when I do the turnarounds is sort of, owning everything within me, you know, instead mm -hmm. of separating different traits within myself and witnessing different traits in another person and generating a disempowering belief. And would you say that uh, part of coming to that place of freedom and open-mindedness is accepting, say, that we are all things, every single one of us is everything? Well, or if it a, comes out of my head, head, if it comes out of my head, that's the moment it's created. And if I don't love it, uh -huh. I can always question what I'm thinking and believing. Mm. Beautiful. <laughs> and if people, I'm being, I'm really... if people are, are, tell me something, then I, I, I understand that, that that's where they're at. And I understand that from experience. And, um, <laughs> but I'm very aware, aware of my own. And, and that's the one that matters. And if it's not working for me, it belongs on paper so that I can question it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for your audience, when I say write it down on paper, um, what I mean is that's where the thought is stable. Like if I had the thought he betrayed me, I would write that down because the ego will want to shift and say, that's not what I really meant. I didn't, well, it really is more like, and you know, like that. So it stabilizes once we write it down and then we carry it with those four questions and turn around all the way through and we can always do the mm -hmm. others later. I love that. And, you know, I had a, a question that I really wanted to dive into with you and I'm now starting to uh, question what I'm trying to question you about. And I really want to run this by you and it's really referring to religion. So, at the moment, I'm actually, obviously I'm from Australia, but I'm here in the States and I'm in Salt Lake City and it has got a really high population of Mormons mm -hmm. and I'm really diving, I'm going to the, the churches, I'm really expanding my mind and my awareness as to what they believe, like mm -hmm. getting in their belief system mm -hmm. so that I can gain this better understanding. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I have found that I need to do the work on is feeling uh, sorry for some people who feel like they are trapped because I'm hearing experiences from them where they are starting to question the belief system that they have grown up in. 
and I wondered if I could ask how you would respond to somebody, say they came to you and they were in this religious belief system their entire life and they've gotten to this point where they've, they have asked questions of the religion and the beliefs and they've gotten to a point where they're just, they've constantly been told, have faith, don't, don't question, have trust, have faith. And they have so much internal doubt and turmoil and suffering based on not feeling limited in their ability to question. So I wondered how would you, how would you help and support somebody who was in that position in their life where they're, they want to question, but they feel trapped by um, that reinforcement well, it, to not question. You know, no one has to question what they think. It's, you know, this is, um, um, you know, it's, it's not mandatory. No one has to do that. And everyone has their own path and every path leads to the same place. So ultimately that's just how it is. But um, if someone came to me, um, I offer inquiry because that's what's worked for me. That's that's my path. So when people come to me, you know, they're 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 aware of that. And so um, I would just um, have them fill in a judge and neighbor worksheet on a situation having to do with anything, and if it had to do with a church, then to put their thoughts down on what are they thinking and believing about the church or um, or its people and then we would go through inquiry and it would bring them closer to those people they would continue, they would remain in the church or they wouldn't that's not the point but they would be closer to those people they would not be confused or or hypocritical or worried they'd be you know, we don't leave the people we love. Like the people in my life, I don't leave the people I love. Um, uh, they can leave me, but I don't leave them. In my heart, mm -hmm. everyone is welcome. And I'm very well aware of that. But I understand when people um, oppose me because they're believing their thoughts about me. And um, so I understand all separation from experience. But, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's always for me when someone comes to me, it's um, a judge and neighbor worksheet. But I don't, um, when I, when we sit in the questions, there's not a goal other than to see what is really true for that individual and to keep me out of it. And, mm -hmm. um you know, it's otherwise, what, what value is it? You know, it is the mm -hmm. truth that sets us free. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, it, you know, for me, freedom is like being brought to love and there's nothing outside of that. Mm. And, and I'm getting from you that it's in our questioning that we get to love. So our questioning builds a connection mm -hmm. and it is our lack of questioning that creates that separation and um, comparison. Yeah, yeah. And, and, mm -hmm. um, and love, I think, it, it could be that everyone has a, a, a different definition of that. So that's something that mm -hmm. everyone has to, to look to for themselves. I like the word happiness because it's something that we're, it's more relatable to us, you know, and, and on that judge and neighbor worksheet on the work.com, it's on, on statement four, it's on, in that situation, what do you want in, in this case, the, the, the church for that person? Um, what would make you happy? What do you want for what you need from those from those people or that church or that religion uh, to be happy? And then you list your thoughts there and you question them and turn them around. And it really is, um, you know, there's a, a great experience of love there in, in, in that entire worksheet as we sit in it. But it's a, it brings us together on, with mm -hmm. the world and we're no longer at war with the world and what they believe. 
And, mm. you know, when we're free, the people around us are free. They're free to mm. say what they want and be who they are. And it's, and in that I grow and expand because they're always teaching me. I'm responsible mm. for what I believe. And um, mm -hmm. it, it's like I didn't believe on purpose, but mm -hmm. I can identify what I believe when it goes against mm -hmm. my heart and I can question it. And, mm -hmm. and that's been the process and it's a beautiful process. It sure is. And uh, that just brings me to a question that one of our um, audience members wanted to ask you um, from Brian. He said that he's heard, heard you speak into um, defensiveness as the first act of war. Defense, and he wondered defense if you could elaborate. Is, yeah, defense, yeah. I, I often say defense is the first act of war. So, um, and I still um, see that that's so in my life. Mm -hmm. So if, if someone says, Katie, you're wrong, then I take that in and we can have a discussion. If I'm not aware of what I said or did that was wrong to my own mind, then that person can point it out to me. So that's a discussion. So now we're discussing mm -hmm. it and it's something that I can identify with or I can watch out for. And so we've had a, a, a great discussion when we resolve it that way and mm -hmm. it leaves us both open. But if we look at the, the, the same thing, someone says, Katie, you're wrong, and I say, I'm wrong. You think I'm wrong? How dare you say that to me? You know, um, <laughs> you're the one that's wrong, and that was rude. You know, I was just stating my <laughs> point of view, and I have a right to that. Okay, so who started the war? It was me. Defense is the first act of war. All they said is, Katie, you're wrong. That's all they said. <laughs> And who started the war? You know, how dare you? How dare you judge me? Well, it was me. I started the war. So it's mm -hmm. not. It's not. It's, it's not in the first. It's in the second. And when we look to ourselves, it's in the first. I started the war. Mm -hmm. And is that what you refer to as sort of the person who came to you and said, "Katie, you're wrong." As sort of, you know, um, you know, being either the student or the teacher, do you ask the question, okay, tell me more about that. What does that mean? Or well, you get if, defensive. If, and, if, and if I can see clearly where I was wrong, then we can both have a good laugh because, you know, I can say, oh my gosh, <laughs> I, I did. I'm sincerely sorry. And how can I make that right with you? And we laugh and we go on and I make it right where I can. So there's, there's no stuck place. There's, you know, it's, it's not this, a place where mold grows and, and, and resentment and bitterness and shriveling the next time you see that person or gossiping about that person. It's all about mm -hmm. growing and not getting stuck. And inquiry mm -hmm. is the, is the um, it's, a, it's a harmless way. There's no, there's nothing to believe or not to believe in it. It's all about awareness. Mm. Mm, that's beautiful. Um, I'm sure he'll really appreciate um, your elaboration on that as well. And another question that we had from um, another follower, Alexandria, she actually wanted to ask you about um, empaths. And she wanted to know, how can an empath connect with others, but also keep themselves in a good state with so many others' energies and motives and emotions swirling around the relational atmosphere? Mm -hmm. So how would, how would you sort of um, term that in terms of somebody who, who identifies themselves as an empath? You know, um, and I think there's an, 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 you know, I discuss this in, in a mind at home with itself. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. sure I do. But if I think I know what you are, th like you're telling me something and I'm feeling horrible and you're being just authentic and sweet and dear and you're in so much trouble and I'm experiencing that as as I work with you then that is just all about me I am thinking I know how you feel and mm -hmm. when I work with people I know I don't know how you feel 
that I can only imagine how you feel. So in that, I can just rip myself to shreds if I weren't more aware that, you know, if I'm sitting with you, it's, a, it, it's about how can I help you rather, how can, rather than how can I just sit there in my ego thinking I know what you really feel and what you really think. And it's so subtle, we don't even know we're doing it. And it can just wipe out an, a, a beautiful um, teacher, you know, just burn them out. But um, mm -hmm. so I suggest inquiry, you know, I recommend inquiry and just to know yourself a little more deeply. And when you know yourself, you know, um, you know that you don't know. <laughs> And that don't know that don't know mind is my favorite. When you understand the universe is friendly, you never need to know anything ever again. And the mind is open, and there's there, all the direction in the world is in that mind, and it's and it's um, an, it, it's a beautiful mind. That don't know mind. Mm. It never has to worry or project a future. It's um, it understands that. This is a beautiful world, and it's given to us and to wake up to. Mm. But what we're believing and about the world could use a little work. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I definitely see so many of us suffering because of what, who we're identifying as. And I wonder, you know, if somebody asked you, Katie, uh, to, to tell them who you are, how would you answer that question? Oh, you know, I answer it from the birth certificate, Byron Kathleen, <laughs> and my marriage certificate, Byron Kathleen Mitchell. And people <laughs> people don't just say, and do you believe it? So, you know, uh -huh. I'm like in the world, but not so much of that world, I guess you could say. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. It's an interesting thing to ponder, I think, because yeah. we have so many so many things that we identify ourselves as and um well you yeah, know if i, I question I really myself interested. i'm i'm i can have the birth certificate in front of me i'm byron kathleen is it true <laughs> and just sit in those four questions and turn around it will blow your mind <laughs> about yeah. who and what you yeah. you really are as compared to who and what you think or believe you are it, it's a it, those are two different worlds those are the, mm -hmm. one is the world of imagination, and the other is is um, pure grace and and um, and knowledge. Just just um, <laughs> pure creativity. Yeah, <laughs> most definitely. And Katie, it's been such a pleasure getting to connect with Thank you. Thank you. And I do have. Um, I do have a final question to ask uh -huh. you, but before I do that, I would absolutely love for you to share with our audience out there. You did mention that you've got a book that's about to come out, A Mind at Home with Itself, mm -hmm. and you've got your website, thework.com, where people can access the questions for mm -hmm. inquiry. Um, are they, uh, how can, is that best for people to connect with you and dive further into your work? Is there anywhere you'd like to direct our audience? Well, uh, I think that's the best way. And um, the work, of course, is um, in um, a mind at home with itself as well. And um, people who have who have read the book ahead of publishing are are they think it's an important book, and um, that's the only way I can talk about it. And so the work <laughs> is there, and how to do the work, um, you know, for for those people listening now that don't want to wait for that book, just go to thework.com. And also we mm -hmm. have certified facilitators on thework.com that are in the practice. And um, they're there and they speak so many different languages and they're so precious and so good. And um, mm -hmm. so you can have, also we have a, a free helpline where you can call, you don't have to give your name, you just call, have a worksheet written and ready, and um, they'll do the work with you. And, and it's, um, it's, it's a beautiful gift that these people offer. Mm. Mm. 
It's wonderful, wonderful. And the final question that I have for you, and it might seem funny and and uh, and whatnot after our conversation, but I wanted to ask you if you could instill one belief into the minds of everybody in the world uh, right now, what what would that belief be? That if you're suffering, there's a way to end that suffering. Mm -hmm. And that way is to um, identify what you're thinking and believing that is so powerful about yourself, another person, and write it down and question it. Mm, that's beautiful, beautiful, Katie. And I just want to just acknowledge just how beautiful um, this, you know, last hour has been to just share this. And I feel my mind has expanded already. And I am sure that the audience, everybody listening, would have got so much value from uh, what you've shared with us all today. And I just really want to show some appreciation for the work that you do and have done and continue to do in the world. Um, it is completely life transforming and acts, it gives people access to true happiness in their lives. So, so much appreciation for you. And I'm coming to Salt Lake City soon. Oh, I know. Yeah. I know. I'm yeah. uh, thinking about extending my trip so that oh, I can good. Uh, make good. it. <laughs> Do you know the dates on that event? Anyway, it's it's on it's on my calendar at thework dot com for those people who hear this before the event and are interested. And yes. I'm very excited um, about that. It's like um, going home again. I um, I I love going to Salt Lake City and and perfect. Mm. So oh, look, beautiful. It's such that. a beautiful place. Yes, it I, is. I know you like the mountains. I'm currently looking out over the mountains and um, yeah. it's a special, special place. So yeah. I will have those dates um, all linked up when uh, for our audience so that they can check that out and uh, definitely get in touch with you and the work that you're doing in the world. So Great. thank you so, so much. Thank Katie. you, Vanessa. And thank you for your efforts and contribution and making this a beautiful world. Oh, thank you so Bye -bye. much. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye for now.